Welcome to the channel. In 1885, a German pediatrician by the name of Emil Pfeiffer described a febrile illness with lymphadenopathy and severe pharyngitis that he named Drusen fever or glandular fever. He was referring to infectious mononucleosis. Let's discuss mononucleosis syndromes in more detail. These syndromes, which include infectious mononucleosis caused by the Epstein-Barr virus, as well as similar infections caused by cytomegalovirus, HIV, and Toxoplasma gondii, all present with fever and reactive lymphocytes in the blood. Oral transmission is the principal route of viral transmission for EBV, while Toxoplasma may spread via contact with oocytes in cat feces. Since EBV causes more than 90% of such infections, it will be our focus today. EBV is a DNA virus that undergoes both latent and lytic cycles of replication. Our immune system responds to rapidly proliferating EBV infected B cells eventually causes the acute syndrome of infectious mononucleosis about a month after infection. Symptoms include fever, pharyngitis, and cervical lymphadenopathy, almost universally, while some patients also experience an enlarged spleen, hepatomegaly, and jaundice. Rarely more serious complications occur, including hemolytic anemia, B-cell lymphomas, and spontaneous splenic rupture. Several rare genetic defects cause an inability to control EBV infection, leading to chronic infection, increased propensity to develop non-Hodgkin lymphomas, and nasopharyngeal cancers. An example is X-linked lymphoproliferative, or XLP syndrome which occurs in one in a million men due to mutations in T-cell proteins that regulate immunity. For the majority of patients with primary EBV infections, treatment is supportive. Severely immunocompromised patients might, however, benefit from antiviral treatment with a cyclovir or gancyclovir, while steroids are indicated in hemolytic anemia, severe tonsillar enlargement, and myocarditis. Since spinomegaly is common in the first two to four weeks of symptoms, patients should be asked to avoid contact sports or weightlifting until they are better. It is difficult for uninfected individuals to avoid exposure to EBV since many recovering patients continue to shed high titers of EBV in the saliva for several months. However, Early stage trials for EBV vaccines that target the virus's membrane glycoprotein called GP350 and prevent infection of human B cells are ongoing. That's all for now. Stay safe, everyone.